The Lacoste Munster is in many ways the ideal Flieger watch for the modern watch enthusiast. In my opinion, it is a perfect amalgamation of the vintage design language, from the case, the lugs, and the minimal dial layout that can cater to the modern taste palette with its stunning blue sunray dial, reasonable dimensions, and trendy strap choices. But like everything in life, one size cannot fit all. For many wrists, 42 millimeters is still too large, and the $1,200 price tag makes the watch out of reach for the growing community of affordable watch enthusiasts. Add to this the fact that many enthusiasts, such as myself, have a deep appreciation for the fundamental design principles of the Flieger watches, but also enjoy some of the unnecessary elements of watch design too, like a well-positioned brand logo and on occasion an exhibition case back. Laco's line of basic pilot watches are far from basic in terms of design. They have taken many creative liberties with their historic watch designs and created a lineup of watches that cater to the above needs. Today I'll be looking at the Laco Augsburg Blau Stunder 39, which is an excellent example from this lineup. The Augsburg 39 is a smaller, more affordable alternative to its arguably more conservative bigger brother, the Munster Blau Stunder 42. However, a 42mm Augsburg is also available. At roughly $400, you would typically expect this watch to be a substandard handout for those that want a modern Flieger but can't afford the real deal. This is what I've typically seen from well-established brands and their affordable versions are usually disappointing and often a waste of your hard-earned money. The Augsburg is definitely not one of them and with a few side-by-side -side comparisons, I will show you that the attention to detail and quality of finishing is very close to the Munster. Of course, this watch isn't perfect either, and there are some areas of weakness that can be attributed to the affordable price tag, and I will point them out throughout this review. The Augsburg measures in at 39mm in diameter, roughly 45.8mm from lug to lug, and 12mm tall. The case has a similar media blasted finish to the original series watches, but the actual medium used to blast the case is different and is described by Laco to result in more of a matte finish. Unfortunately, my eyes can't tell the difference in texture and neither can my fingers, but I do observe a slight difference in the materials used. The Munster feels a bit more solid in terms of weight and in terms of color, a little bit darker. On the Augsburg, you have modern lugs that inconspicuously extend out of the case and quickly curve down, allowing for a short lug to lug width. The lugs are thick and the 18mm lug width ensures that the overall silhouette is well proportioned. The basic series have abandoned the original lug design, perhaps to cater to a modern preference. The crown is also completely changed for the Augsburg and is smaller with a 6.9mm diameter. The ridges are very well machined and the crown is easy to grip and operate. The crown action is good and there's no crown or stem wobble. I prefer the conical crown design on the Munster over the somewhat onion-esque crown of the Augsburg, but the quality of manufacturing and finishing on both are identical. The top of the case is beveled in a manner similar to that of the Munster, but the Augsburg has a flat sapphire crystal instead of a double dome crystal. The crystal is very clear with no distortion and has very good viewing angles. Flipping it over, you have a pressed on case pack with a flat sapphire crystal exhibition window. The press down case and non screw down crown allow for the watch to be rated only up to 50 meters of water resistance, similar to that of the Munster. So in terms of case design and materials, these two watches are a bit different, but the quality of finishing across both of them is identical. It is very impressive that Laco are able to maintain these high standards across this wide spectrum of prices. When trying to cut down costs, I suspect that delivering a good quality case isn't impossible. Just use slightly cheaper raw materials, but stick to the same assembly and finishing practices. And Laco appears to have done just that. And while they retained a lot of their case excellence, it doesn't seem beyond reason that they were able to do so. The dial is usually a different beast though, with incredibly tight tolerances and very high quality control standards. The dial on the Munster is beyond impressive, both in terms of appearance and the quality of finishing. I imagine this has a lot to do with a very strict quality control protocol, which likely results in many dials that just don't make the cut. And this has an understandable effect on pricing. So it is within reason to expect that the quality of the dial will drop significantly from a $1,200 watch to a $400 watch. That's where I was wrong, apparently. The dial on the Augsburg is exactly as impressive as that of the Munster. I have no idea how they've managed to do this, but they have. The fundamentally type A style dial has numerals from one to 11, 
and a similar triangle element at the 12 o'clock, as on the Munster. The difference here is that the outer dial ring is absent on the Augsburg, and it has the brand's logo elegantly printed below the 12 o'clock, along with Made in Germany at the 6 o'clock position. I think both these elements look great and make it feel less like a serious Flieger watch, while retaining the be benefits of the extremely legible Type A dial layout. The quality of printing and the finishing of the blue dial base is indistinguishable from the $1200 Munster. The elements are loomed with the same C3 Superluminova, but appear to be slightly more beige compared to the bright white on the Munster. Here's both of them side by side. Unlike the thermally blued hands on the Munster, the Augsburg has matte black painted hands that are also filled with the same off-white C3 Superluminova. The thermal bluing process is a difficult one, so this trade-off to keep the price down is more than reasonable. The hands have a similar sword-style design, and the seconds hands are almost identical. The finishing on the hands is very good, and I couldn't find any poorly finished or poorly painted surfaces. Overall, the dial has been the most impressive aspect of this watch, and I'm stunned at their ability to produce this for the price. Let's take a look at how these elements perform when illuminated. As I mentioned above, each printed element, except the logo and the 6 o'clock text, is painted with C3 Superluminova. This appears to be identical to that of the Munster, and they both have very good nighttime visibility. The loomed elements are bright and don't fade away too quickly. Funnily enough, I actually think that the loom on the Augsburg is a tad better than that of the Munster. So far I've painted a pretty rosy picture and made this watch sound like it's the best watch you could buy with your $400. It still is one of the best you can get for your $400, but there's a small caveat, the movement. This watch houses a Miyota 821A with a hacking seconds hand and comes reasonably well decorated for the price. Unfortunately, the timekeeping abilities can't be compared with the Munster's Elabre grade Etta 2824. I logged the accuracy of this watch over two time periods, the first being a three day period and the next run being a two day period. In the first, I observed an average accuracy of minus 18 seconds per day, and in the second, minus 7 seconds per day. So this is a magnitude off from the Munster's plus 2 seconds per day. But Laco had to bring down the price to one third of that of the Munster, and the movement appears to be the only notable area where they did so. For the $400 price range, this is in the Seiko NH35 territory, and has similar performance. But I personally believe that the NH35 is more stable and can be regulated to much tighter bounds. Additionally, as with many Miyota movements, there's a lot of rotor spinning noise. The 45.8mm lug to lug width makes this 39mm diameter watch wear much smaller than you would typically expect, so those with small wrists under 6 inches can rejoice. On my 6 and a quarter inch wrist, I found these dimensions to be very comfortable. But after spending about 2 weeks with both watches, I think I prefer the 42mm Munster even though some might argue that it is a bit large for my wrist. I like the somewhat oversized and open dial on the Munster. The Augsburg though is a sleeker watch overall and may even be a bit more versatile. The Augsburg ships with the NATO strap that isn't the best in terms of fabric quality, but it does have signed hardware and is finished to match the case, which is a nice touch. The case is 12 millimeters tall, but on the NATO strap sits higher on the wrist because of the two layers of fabric underneath. I'm not a big fan of NATO, so I would definitely swap this out for a two-piece nylon strap like on the Munster or switch to a leather strap instead. The lug width is 18mm, so keep that in mind while strap shopping because you'll most likely want to change the strap. To wrap things up, I think the Augsburg is an incredible watch for the money. Wherever possible, Laco has tried to deliver the exact same quality and finishing that they offer in their original series, and I can't imagine that this is easy or cheap to do. The only real detractor is the Miyota movement, but this too is within reason for a $400 watch, especially considering how much this watch offers in terms of build quality and finishing. If all you are after is an accurate pilot's watch, this may not be the watch for you though. The dial really steals the show, from the color to the finishing, and any fans of blue dials will absolutely love this watch. This is a watch that can be a great affordable addition to a more experienced collection, as well as an excellent first watch for someone new to the hobby. It rarely gets better than this for the price. Of course, there are many other microbrand watches in the price category, and I have some reviewed some of them here, but I think the quality and finishing is a step above any sub $500 microbrand that I've reviewed so far. In terms of presentation, the Augsburg ships in a wonderful fold at the box with the same manual and warranty card like the Munster. 
Thanks for reading and don't forget to read the full length reviews in the link below. I'm very impressed with these watches and they will definitely not be the last Laco related reviews on this channel. So let me know what you think of these watches in the comments.